truly, today is Valentine's Day. All over the world, the people are celebrating. And some are searching for Valentine, some are found them. We all desire to be loved, and we desperately do certain things, work hard to find the true love in our life. But I want to tell you, true Valentine is Jesus Christ, because he gave his life for his bride. And the Bible says, the one who gives life for his bride is the one who loves the most, is the true love. I want to speak about the true love that Jesus Christ has shown us. We always chase after people's acceptance and love in our life. We may be chasing some American dreams, worldly power, and also positions. What you're chasing this morning in your life, Maybe worldly love or godly love. If you love something, you value it. If you value something, you take care of it. For example, if you love your car, if you love your children, your family, you take care of them, you value them. So I want to bring your attention to what, you, what God valued in his life. Let's turn to First John chapter 4. 8 to 10. It says, for God is love. In this, the love of God ha was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his only son to be the redemption for our sins. See, these are the powerful words. When we were yet sinners, he chose to love us, to make us his own children. And that is the kind of love God is showing. I want to tell you this morning, this is the true love that is Christ that has shown in us. He came searching for us and he gave himself on the cross. It's a never ending love, everlasting love beyond the grave, and it never fails. So let's get into that loved relationship with Jesus. We may be running after this world that will come to an end, but Bible says what we need to pursue in our life. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says, pursue love. God is asking each one of us to pursue love, but Bible says God is love, so let's pursue God that is, goes beyond this earthly some years that we live on this earth. Jesus made this practical. When he was in this world, he told every disciples to follow me, to follow me into a relationship, to, uh, to be a son and a daughter, and to a relationship to be like him. He's just calling us to be like him and to be with him where he is right now. That is the calling that we have in our life. If we love God, we need to bear fruit in our life. Those who abide in, his, in him can only have fruit. You may be heard several sermons on bearing fruit. How, what is the fruit that we are talking about? In Ephes uh, Galatians, it says the fruit of the spirits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, and self-control. These are the fruits of Holy Spirit that can flow through each one of us. John 15 says, abide in me. I am the true vine. Nobody can bear fruit except through me. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Being connected to Christ, we can bear the fruit in our life to the fullest. In Psalm 92, 14, it says, even in the old age, you can bear fruit. It is full of sap and green. We see many older people, they still bear fruit for Christ in different ways in their life. What is bearing fruit is run the race, in Isaiah it says, but not grow weary in our Christian race to diligently, steadfastly running the race is bearing fruit in our life. 
not growing weary in doing good in Galatians uh, chapter 6, it says, by doing good, you may be get frustrated. You may get tired of doing good. But if you continue to do good to others, that is bearing fruit. Also, if you walk in spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walking in spirit, resisting the sin, resisting the fleshly desire is a bearing fruit. This morning, being faithful, being truthful, being hallelujah, to be useful in the kingdom of God is bearing fruit. If anyone loves his life, he may lose it. But if you lose your life because of Christ's sake, you may gain it. That is bearing fruit. I want to turn your attention to what Bible says about emphasis on fruit bearing. Bible really emphasizes on fruit bearing in every Christian's life. We, when we turn to John 15, verse 8, it says, By this, my Father is glorified that you bear fruit, so you prove yourself to be a disciple. We can say that I am a disciple of God, but God is expecting to bear fruit in our life. Then only that proves that we are the true disciples of Jesus. So we, uh, the, the fruit proves that we are disciples. And in John 15, 16, it says, you did not choose me. I chose you up, and you are appointed to that you go and bear fruit. We are chosen generation to bear the fruit in this world. So we are chosen to bear fruit. So let's bear the fruit in our life. That is the spiritual fruit in our life. In Colossians 1.10, it says, So walk in the manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing the fruit in good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Here it talks about bearing fruit in good work and also increasing in the knowledge of Christ. Yes, we may be discouraged of reading Bible, studying Bible, spending time in prayer. These all counts. It is bearing fruit in our life. Are we increasing in knowledge from the time we got saved till, till this day? How much have you grown? God has a measuring rod. Are we growing in Christ every day? Hallelujah. In the word of God, in the Holy Spirit that we need to grow every day in our lives. Also in Matthew 3.8, it says, bear the fruit in keeping with repentance. I want to say that we are repentant people. Do we have that fruit in our life? That our action, did that, that, did that display the repentance life in our life? I want to encourage each one of you, every day, live with a repentant heart. Also in Matthew 7, verse 16 to 20, you, the Bible says that you will recognize them by their fruits. Grapes gathered from, are the grapes gathered from thorn bushes is fixed from thistles. On every healthy tree bears healthy fruit. Every diseased tree bears the bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear the bad fruit, nor can the diseased tree bear good. So it says, thus you will recognize them by fruit. No, we will not recognize them by their gifts and talents, but by their fruit. What kind of fruits they are bearing in their life? So wrong fruit, wrong seed, but the good seed is the word of God. That should produce fruit in our life. Also it says, if we don't bear fruit, you may say, I cannot bear fruit. I'm struggling in my life. If you don't bear fruit, we will be cut off. In the same chapter, verse 19 says, every tree that doesn't bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown in fire. You may say I am, you know, bearing some fruits in my life, but God says if we bear some fruits, he is going to prune us time to time so that we can bear more fruit in our life. I, I, I am just thinking whether you have heard this many times, but I pray this morning that this message will touch you and inspire you to bear more fruit in your life. I want to take you to a very familiar passage in the Bible that mentions about parable of the sower. It mentions in all three gospels except gospel of John. The story is very familiar. We go to Luke chapter 8. 
verse 5 to 8. It just says about three types of soil in our life. A sower went to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell on the wayside, and tr it was trampled down. Birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock. As soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. It fell on some thorns, and thorns sprang up, and it choked. So here we see four types of soils. One is on the wayside, where it was trampled, and also it is birds have picked up. The enemy will not allow it to come into a heart. It is just picked up and destroyed by the, by the Satan. So when it falls on the rocks, it is, has no root or moisture. It will sprout, but it will die soon. In Some of them, the word of God bring joy in their life, but it will not stay. Also, when it is thorn, because of the worldly pleasures, richness, oh, chaos of this world, our work, everything can choke the word of God in our heart without thing. So these three soils is not yielding any fruit. There is no growth at all. But God says if it falls in the good soil, it can give a good harvest in our life. So can we say three patterns of fruit bearing in our life? You can examine yourself where you fall in the uh, category where you, what kind of fruit you are bearing in in your life Luke chapter 8 and verse 8 but others fell on the good ground sprang up yielded a crop hundredfold when he said to these things he cried out those who have ears let him hear so here we see the seed which was one has sprang up to yield a crop fruit to a hundred percent that is the opportunity that we have. Each word we are hearing that has the opportunity to grow, yield fruit to a hundred percent. In Mark 4, 8, it says it is increased and produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. There is an increasing growth in the yielding. One seed has a probability of yielding fruit 30%, 60%, and 100%. In Matthew 13, 8, it says some 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold, and 60 and 30 in a declining order. We have all these are possibilities in our life that to bear fruit. We have a possibility to bear 100% fruit, or either we can increase our growth every day in our life, or we have a possibility if we are not diligent, if we are not faithful, it can decrease and lo be lost in our life. So I encourage you how we can bear fruit in our life to a hundred percent. Do you ever think that in our life, how we can increase and bear fruit as Luke 8, 8 says, bear hundred percent of fruit. That should be our goal in our life. How can we do it? I want to turn your attention that where the seed is coming from, that is an important ma matter in this to bear fruit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, it says, God supplies the seed to the sower and bread to the food. He not only supplies the seed, and, but he gives an increase and he increases the fruit of righteousness. So in our life, let's get the word of God from God and the real source, the word of God in our life so that we can bear full 100% fruitfulness in our life. There is only one criteria God is expecting that you, are, you and I become a sower in the kingdom of God. How many of you decide and have a desire to sow in the kingdom of God? As we go going to see, how he's um, telling us, if we become a sower, he's going to give the sow seed and we can, he's going to multiply it. It's not because of our effort, our talents. He's going to multiply if we are faithful to sow the seed in the kingdom of God. The second thing is choose to sow in a good ground. In Matthew 13, 23, you all have heard it that there, I just explained to you all three grounds could not yield any source but others yield some uh, 30%, 60%, and 100%. So 
In Luke 8 and 15, it says about the good grounds. You know, my father was a farmer, and he used to tilt the ground, plow the ground so hard, many times, many times, he makes that land ready for the seed to be uh, you know, planted. So with a lot of water, they go over and over. Some of you who know about cultivation, you may know that if the soil is hard, nothing can grow in that. So they prepare multiple times and make it like a cake batter so that the seed can get in and sprout very quickly and very fruitful that will become. So in, uh, you may think, what is a good soil? They are talking about good soil all the time. What is a good soil? Let's turn to Luke chapter 8, verse 15. It says, But the ones that fell on the good grounds are those who, having heard of the word of God with a noble and good heart, keeping it and bear fruit with patience. So, good soil is our heart. The heart which is noble and good heart, then with patience we can bear fruit in our life. I want to ask you a question. This morning, how is our heart this morning? Is it humble? Is it receptive? Is it what kind of things are in our heart? Is, is the heart is occupied by Jesus Christ? Or is our heart filled with pride, lust, arrogance, hate, jealousy, selfishness, hard-heartedness, puffed up with pride? If we have anything of this, our fruits will not prosper. Our, we have to prepare our heart, humble ourselves so that we can bear fruit. When the word of God comes, it can be rooted. It can have the Holy Spirit and it can sprout and bear fruit. Hope I'm not boring you with saying bearing fruit. But God is looking for a noble heart, for a purified heart, a humble heart. A repented heart, a trusting heart. When you hear a word of God, are we trusting and believing in the word of God? So let's cling to him. If we cling to him, believe the promises, we have a great harvest in the days to come. The third thing is in Matthew 13, 23, it again says, you may listen to the word, listen, but listening to the truth is important. What is the truth? The word of God is the truth. This is the truth that nobody can question. The Bible says, know the truth and truth will set you free. So let's listen to the truth, not the lies of the enemy. Let's put out the lies of the enemy in our life. So we need to hear it more. In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing hearing the word of God. The more we hear, the more we absorb the word of God, that is going to bear much fruit in our life. Maybe one day, every day, when we share the word of God with the stranger, with our friends, with our colleagues, whatever situation God brings, we can be ready and bear fruit for Christ. And in Matthew 3.23 itself, it says, not only we need to understand, he says, you who hears the words and understand it, who indeed bears fruit. Yes, we are hearing the word, hearing the truth, but understanding is very important. Yes, when Jesus was preaching here, he said to the multitudes, hear also understand. So understanding is very important. What is understanding? Understanding is coming together in mind. Hearing is just the reception of spoken words, but understanding is understanding with the mind, recognition of what is it is saying and what to be done and doing it is understanding. So these days, hallelujah, I want to give you an example in Acts chapter 8. It says about a very familiar story. Philip is running to be an Ethiopian eunuch who is reading the word, he is not understanding. But when Philip, preached to him the word of God about Jesus. He got convicted. And he, just when he saw the water, he said, I want to obey the commandment of the Lord. And he moved to obey the commandment of God. That is what is understanding. When we understand the word of God, we do the word of God. 
Bible says, do not be just hearers of the word, cheating yourself, but be the doers of the word. Proverbs also encourages in 4.7, it says, wisdom is principal thing, therefore get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. If you have wisdom and no understanding, then it will be unfruitful. That's why in all you're getting, get understanding. May God richly continue to speak to us in these days. Bearing fruit, you may think it's optional, but it's an obligation. Let's go through it quickly. In Matthew 3.23, it says, they indeed who bears the fruit, those who word, hear the word, understand it, and bear the fruit. So we, if we understand it, we are going to bear the fruit. Unless if we don't have fruit, it will be cut away. So sometime our pruning is good for us, for our own good, because we need to have a plenty of harvest in the kingdom of God. So next one is the principle of multiplication. We heard that God is the one who multiplies the fruit in our life. We just faithful and sow the seed. God is the one who multiplies. I just want to look at this slide that says in Luke 8, 100%, and in Mark, it's increasing order, and in Matthew, it is in decreasing order. God, in the word of God, writes everything with a purpose. Either you can be something very faithful and obtain a 100% fruitfulness, or you can slowly progress, and God is going to give an increase from 30, 40 to 100 fold. And if you're not faithful, if you're negligent, it may decrease in our life. Every day after hearing, you may forget the word and less and less fruits can come. These are the possibilities. Let's aim at the 100% and be a winner in the kingdom of God. Seventh one is going to be what you sow is what you reap. You have heard that several times that when we sow, that is what we are going to reap. So if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. In 2 Corinthians 9.6, it says, you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. And if you sow bountifully, you also reap bountifully. In Psalm 126, words 5 and 6, it says, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. They will continually go forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing. Doubtless come again with rejoicing. If you want to be seen in the eternal kingdom, that you need to bear fruit with tears. It says bearing seed for sowing. To bear the seed for sowing, you need to spend time in the presence of God. Obtain that seed and share with others so that we can bear the fruit for kingdom of God. As worship team is coming forward, I want to encourage you to we are chosen. We are not worthy of anything, but we were chosen to bear fruit. So let's go forth and bear fruit. Let's close our eyes and examine our hearts. Are we bearing fruit? Are you satisfied with the st stage how our heart is? Are you today, ask ourselves, am I, can I do well? God says if you sow one seed he's going to multiply into 30 60 100 fold it is like a greater math there is no other mathematical table like this one multiplied by one will give you 30 percent 60 percent and 100 percent just we need to be faithful and sow the seed that god has given in our life I want you all to surrender wherever we are. Today we may be at home. Maybe we are listening online. I want to encourage you. If we don't bear fruit, it's going to be cut away. We may lose our spiritual inheritance. Let's come to the throne of grace and ask for the mercy of God and prepare our heart to receive that seed in a good soil and receive the seed from God and plant it in the kingdom of God. 
I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Thank you for you have chosen us to bear fruit, O oh Lord. Each one of us listening to this sermon, O oh Lord, listening to this word. May bear fruit in the days to come, O oh Lord. Every work of the enemy, Lord, be cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. Udama, Shandara, Deera, Hallelujah. Everything that is hindering them, Lord. Everything that is, Lord, pulling them backward, O oh Lord. Jesus, Hallelujah. Uraga, Shandara, in the moment of challenges, O oh Lord. In the moment of, Hallelujah, their life, Hallelujah, difficult decisions, O oh Lord. Lord Jesus, help them to bear fruit, O oh Lord. Jesus, the enemy is defeated, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Because of the Calvary's work, we declare the victory, O oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the anointing, O oh Lord, let faithfulness, O oh Lord, let truth, O oh Lord, reign in those who are listening right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Udaba Shandara, Hallelujah. O oh Rabba Shandara, let the word of God, O oh Lord, Hallelujah, sprung forth, O oh Lord Jesus, to its fullest, O oh Lord, in the kingdom of God, O oh Lord. Touch many hearts, O oh Lord. Touch many of our friends, O oh Lord, our colleagues, O oh Lord, our church members, O Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. To the ends of the earth, O Lord. Hallelujah. Send us, Lord, with the seed, O Lord, to sow. We thank you, Lord. We surrender ourselves to your word, O Lord Jesus, to the, your truth, O Lord. We thank you and praise you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you with these words.